he got so good that they couldn't ignore him. That's how it works. First white crappie ever right there. All right, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Davis. This is the Flock and Crappie channel. I normally cover crappie fishing videos, how-to videos on sonar, and uh, some boating videos. But today, this video is actually the third part of the Illinois tour. I wanted to talk about a little something different, and that's the business side of social media, specifically the business side in the outdoor industry of social media. If you actually came here just for the fishing, you can skip to this time spot right here and watch the fishing videos. Plenty of fish caught in this video for you. Hope you enjoy that. Otherwise, stick around. There's actually three different uh, business segments I wanted to talk about. The first one is if you're a small business owner and or you just have an idea of seeing an opportunity, how you take advantage of that opportunity. I'm going to be talking with the owner of ACC Crappie Sticks, Andy, in this first segment. The second part is if you're new to this social media side, you just started a YouTube channel, kind of trying to determine your value or how you uh, how you go about determining the value. And lastly, how to really look up what your value is on a specific platform and then pitching that value to a client or a customer or a company and getting them to pay you that to create some content. Hopefully you enjoy the video. Please leave a like and comment down below if you have any questions or if you're in this game already and you have solutions to any questions that I ask in the video. Also, if you're new, please subscribe and click that bell so you get notified every time I post a video. I just thought there was a a gap in the market um crappie fish for 30 years and there's some there's some decent rods out there but i just felt there was a need for one with a little more backbone a little lighter weight and um, i just want to create a whole a whole platform for like community and family feel and resources and videos and having you guys do YouTube videos and blogs and just a whole a whole resource a whole all-in-one place to go and talk to other fishermen and it's a whole network mm -hmm. and um, we're doing things that a lot of the other there ones aren't is. doing oh my goodness and I'm really enjoying it we're doing some new samples we're doing some Shorter rods, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven. I'm actually really looking forward to the seven footer. Yeah. Do some uh, finesse fishing for some smallmouth. That seven six bass rod would be perfect for that too. Yeah. Seven six foot grip, not a bass rod, sorry. Yep. No, I use it for that too. I even use the eight foot for some walleye stuff. Yeah. But yeah, we've got some. Um, a good writer working with us that's going to interview the, the field staff guys and, and... All right, so yes, that was kind of a shameless plug for his new lineup of rods, but I want you to key in on one point. He talked about developing a community and leaning into social media influencers in order to develop and build that community. A lot of companies in the outdoor industry, certain niche of the, I should say certain niches of the outdoor industry are really far behind on this. And one of the main reasons they're really far behind on this is they still believe in old media, television, radio, magazine ads. They believe that actually produces a higher ROI than using a micro-influencer or a micro-micro-micro-influencer, someone with 500 to 800 views per video. So because a lot of these companies actually lean into larger media or old media, you know, it discourages a lot of new social media personalities or people, maybe if you're watching this, you got five subscribers or 10 subscribers on your YouTube channel. You don't have a community built up, and, and if that's you, someone brand new to this industry, or you're trying to break in, Andy was actually contacted by someone just like you and how to break into this industry, and he actually referenced Steve Ranella from Meat Eater and how he broke into the industry, how he became one of the best in his industry. So pay attention to this clip. Yeah, that's what we do. And he wanted a door to be opened, and wanted, you know, Hoyt to, you know, give him a show and, and come on into the club and it's like that's not how it works what, god damn there's guys at work they're like oh, yeah those guys but they started i'm like no they Steve started Rinella with nothing started 
on a Greyhound bus because he couldn't afford a car because he was saving all his money up for hunting trips. He went to school and he learned how to write. Yep. Nobody handed the man anything. That's how he started. He got so good that they couldn't ignore him. That's how it works. He got so good, people just couldn't ignore him, and it took him a very long time to develop that skill set. This is a long-term game, so if you're just getting into this industry, don't be getting into it for a quick cash payout. It's not how it works, and that, that's not how any industry works. It's a long-term play, and you've got to be dedicated to it. That's just some advice if you're just starting out into this industry. All right, let's get into actually how, to, how I go about pricing some of my videos for how do I price myself? How do I go to a company and say, I am worth this much money? Now this is an exact science, but this is the best way that I think I can give you. You have to understand what it costs to run an advertisement on the platform that you're on, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. The best way to do this is just to Google it. So if I Googled, how much does a YouTube ad cost to run? I would get an answer of 10 to 30 cents per view. So you take that 10 to 30 cents per view and honestly, I would go on the conservative side and say 10 cents per view. You take your average views, which maybe it's a thousand, maybe it's 5,000, let's say it's 5,000 per video. That's $500 worth of advertising revenue to target those 5,000 people. But then you have to factor in the cost of filming the video and editing the video, something that these companies would have to pay for anyway in order to run ads on these platforms. Now, depending on your skill set, if you're just starting out, if you don't have that great of editing skills, minor mediocre at best, as of filming this video right now, um, there are editors out there that are much better than I am. They might charge 5,000, they might charge 10,000. That's just gonna be a judgment call on your part. Are you worth 100, $200 to edit the video? Or are you just worth the cost of advertising, the 500 bucks? or the $200 to reach 2,000 people. You gotta start somewhere if you're on a really small end. And if you're on the really small side, it might not even be cash. You might just say, hey, send me a pack of those jigs or send me a couple of those lures, I'll do a few videos for you. You're gonna go film the vlogs anyway. You might as well get some free gear out of it. In exchange, you're giving them a warm target audience to present their product in front of. It's kind of a win-win. Now, if it's real, you're really set on, I need cash or money for making this video, you can present that company with three advantages, with three main advantages that you give over just a YouTube ad. The first one is your advertisement is actually playing into perpetuity on your channel. It has a much higher probability of going viral because it is someone's YouTube video, it's not just an ad. It also has a warm audience. Okay, this warmer audience might be harder to target if someone is just creating an ad for the first time on whatever platform that you're on as an influencer. And lastly, the biggest advantage is you're paying a one-time cost. Instead of running an advertisement and paying per view as to how many times someone watches this video, they're, playing, they're paying a one-time fee, all-encompassing. What your average view is, plus what it takes for you to film and edit that video. Whether it's $200, $500, $5,000, I don't know. That's really up to you. But your baseline should be, how much does it cost to reach the amount of audience that I average on whatever platform that I'm on? For YouTube, it's, I'm gonna say 10 cents on a conservative amount. My YouTube videos average somewhere between three to 5,000 views. That's three to $500. Now, if I've actually pitched businesses to say, I will create a video for $500, a lot of them come back and say, yeah, you might be worth it, but we're just not interested. And that's okay because rejection is part of this game. You just gotta keep trying. Eventually someone says yes, and when you produce really high quality content or what they view as uh, high ROI on that content, they're gonna keep working with you. So now that I presented kind of a baseline of how you should judge your, or how I actually judge my work and what it's worth, I do wanna hear from you because I'm sure there's other video creators out there um, that are much more, uh, that are much more advanced both in the filmmaking and editing world and as well as in the business world. So please comment below how you price your work, um, not only to help myself out, but to help others in the community. I contacted quite a bit by smaller YouTube channels um, on just how to do certain things, whether it's camera work and business-wise. I'll be honest with you, I don't have all the answers. 
But this is just what I have for you right now. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit going into it. If you're a small business or you're a business in the industry watching this right now, there are a lot of advantages of working with a social media influencer over creating someone, paying someone to create an ad and run it on a platform that has an expiration date versus paying the influencer basically one-time cost for a lifetime ad. There's a lot of advantages in that. All right, so that's gonna be the end of the business talk. If you came to watch the fishing on this video, it's gonna play in just a second. I gotta thank ACC Crappie Sticks, Andy. Thank you again for uh, helping getting this thing together. Also, Matt from Three Pound Fishing. Huge thank you to both those guys for getting this trip together, making this trip happen. Please go subscribe to their social media, uh, YouTube and Instagram channels. All right, let's just get into the fishing, shall we? There's brush piles right here. There's just stuff all over the place. Side mark stumps, drops, ledges, humps. There's a There's something. stump on a hump. Yeah. Doesn't look like anything there. See, that's rooted, eroded root lot. There should be 10 fish in that. And there might be, you know, there might be two big ones that are down in those root wads. Look at that. Is that just a big pile of them? Holy smokes. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Back out on Wren Lake here with the owner of ACC Crappie Sticks, Andy. And uh, it's a lot calmer this morning than yesterday. Yesterday was windy, sleeting, not fun. But uh, we just went over a big pile of fish I just showed you. Hopefully we can put some two pound fish in the boat. Fingers crossed. Pound and a half. Pound and a half. Pound and a half. So let's get to catching fish. All right, we're gonna jump into a real quick here, but I wanna go through the setup. So it's a 10 foot jig rod. We're both using 10 footers, 20 pound braid, uh, a double jig setup. They're both 1 16th ounce jigs. As you can see, the top one is the pink and chartreuse. The bottom one is an orange and chartreuse, I believe or an orange and pink. And yeah, we just set up over this huge school of fish. And here we go. A big one? Oh, that's a good one. I'm gonna switch up colors. Whoo! We're just gonna have to sit here. Okay. There he is. There we go. Ooh, there that's we a go. good one too. That's a big crappie. Moves off a little bit deeper. Yep. Boom. Catching big. No on me singing or. Oh, you! I don't care what you do. I'll put it in if you want it. I actually got a buddy Pat. But, man, you can sing and play guitar. Yeah. My daughter makes so much fun of me. <laughs> I was sitting around one day and they called him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There we go. Doubled not, up. Doubled up. It's not how it goes. Um, I had open the door for you. I think it was like three the same size now. How deep are you fishing there? Uh, I think I'm like 12 feet. This is a 10 footer, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm probably a foot, foot and a half, two feet. That's something, Andy. There we go. There's a good one. Good one. There we go. Andy for solid talk about it. But, I mean, Oh yeah. There we go. I'm probably gonna have to end up. Um, I I got five minutes. Of time. There, they are right there. Yeah, 
Better get up here, they're right below the boat. And the camera off. Well, I got, I got, I've got buddies. I got like 150,000 flight I mean, flying I've miles. Got guys right now in Texas that are like, dude, come on down. Dang it. You got one in Florida, come on down. You can literally hop on, and I don't have time to be gone for a week anymore. Yeah. I used, used to love it. I mean, I'll take you fishing. Here we go. Good one. That's a pretty good sized fish. That's carrying 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, definitely there it is. Oh. I've got some big ones for the body to put on your back. We're out all day. You know, you open up some of these and they just don't work. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Good one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are the fish we want. Yeah, I like to bring it right over the yep. there. You like that? Perfect for the camera. I, can, but I know exactly how we can do it. It'll be cool. There he is. You've got to try to do it during the week. Yeah. It's just, it's just, we wouldn't be doing this right now on a Saturday. And do too many boats. Maybe yesterday on a nasty day, but yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some meat markets around here. I want to start. There you go. They're dinks though. They're going to be hitting. The bottom oh, one's the same. That exact same setup you got right there. See, I wonder if it's color or that's just the first one they see or there's so many variables. Yeah. Because that's, we're literally using the exact same one. Yeah. All right, and that's going to wrap it up for the video. Appreciate you watching as always. Be sure to leave a comment below um, if you have any questions or if you have any advice on the business side of this social media game to help other people watching this video. And yeah, we caught a ton of fish. Uh, that third day there's I put 10 minutes worth of fish in here so I think that's enough otherwise this video would probably be a half hour long uh, but again huge thank you to Andy ACC crappie sticks if you're looking for a new crappie fishing rod or fishing rod in general I know spring's just around the corner there's like three feet of snow outside but spring is just around the corner you can go to acccrappiesticks.com pick the rod you want and before you click buy you can go to the discount code area type in code FC10 FC10 save 10% off. It helps my channel out, plus you get a great fishing rod for 10% off. So appreciate you watching as always. We'll see ya.